think I just had one extra sip of coffee after you guys joined. Good morning. Um, so, hi, welcome to my sound space here in Cornwall. My name is Jane. Um, and today I'm going to be answering a question that's probably the one I get asked the most of all um, by you guys, by people coming to my sessions um, in the real world, in the 3D world, um, and everyone attending online, and especially those coming online who have maybe never experienced sound before, have never even thought about having a sound bath before, but amazingly, this, this new kind of reality we've been in the last few months has encouraged them to try something new, or maybe they have a family member or a friend who's a complete sound geek who's finally talked them into it because actually now you can do it from your own home there's something um, that makes it all a bit more accessible as with so many practices um, but the question I get asked most of all is what do you feel during a sound bath and, um, and it could be everything or nothing is the truth it can be the most kind of magic carpet uh, miraculous hallucinatory experience or it can just feel like a really deep restful sleep and that's kind of the magic of it. Sound is an amazing tool because we're all made of sound. Everything, all matter is just frequency. It's just vibration at different speeds. So we're sound as much as the sound that we can hear is sound. And once you start to get your head around the idea, it all seems a little bit less scary. Um, and what you feel seems a bit more accessible. So I'm gonna adjust myself on my seat and we're gonna do a bit of demonstrating this morning. Um, how you feel during a sound bath will really depend on what you're bringing as you come into the sound session. Um, if you're feeling pain or aches or discomfort, then it's really likely that you will find that, and not necessarily magnify, but you'll connect with that during the sound. I use my own knee as an example a lot at the moment. I have a really um, painful cyst in my knee, which means I can't really bend it that well. I can bend it as you can see I am now, but I can't you know, sit in lotus position or do any of those things that I'm used to being able to do as a as a long time yogi and yoga teacher so I find this really frustrating and when I'm in the sound space here what happens is the sound finds the blockages because clearly there is a physical blockage in this case in the joint and it kind of connects to that blockage and what the sound is doing is trying to bring that blockage which is a very low frequency of vibration up to the high frequency of the sound that's coming into the body and that's basically what's happening all the time during a sound session your, the sound coming in is, is meeting lower frequency vibrations and drawing them up. So I find that in terms of how this makes you feel, um, it's kind of like this slightly euphoric sense. You feel yourself being lifted. It's like someone's just pumping dopamine and serotonin into your blood. And um, you just feel this kind of euphoria and like joy, which is amazing. Who doesn't want that? In terms of the pain or discomfort side, if you're working with significant pain, as I am right now, it doesn't necessarily mean the pain is going to be magnified or amplified. It sometimes makes it go away totally, which is incredible. Um, and usually, that, if it does, that usually will last for a good few hours, if not days, after the session. Um, however, what normally happens is you just become very aware of the area where there might be a bit of discomfort. And sometimes that's really useful. Without being a fully diagnostic tool, often sound helps us to understand the part of our body that might be causing us issues, whether it's emotionally or mentally or physically. Um, you know, for example, in yoga this morning, I, my feet were really hurting. They felt really tight and crampy and under-practiced, <laughs> definitely. Um, but when I came to the sound space, it was my knee that was really drawing the sound in. And I'm really aware that my feet are aching because they're not getting enough stretching or work because I'm being very light on them because of my knee. Um, so it can really help you to work out exactly where in your body the challenges are that need to be met. So without pain, it definitely can amplify awareness of discomfort or help you to diagnose that mentally. Um, if you're exhausted coming into your sound bath, if you're really tired, if you've been sleeping terribly, if you have a young child or a Netflix addiction or a cat that sleeps on your head like mine does, then you will be coming into it probably pretty exhausted. And the sound will always find a way of, of understanding what it is you need by this kind of conversation of vibrations that I mentioned. So if you're, if you're very tired and you need to rest, the great news is that a 40 minute sound bath is the equivalent to about four hours of sleep in terms of the, the restful benefits to your body and how you feel. So if you're coming into a sound session in that state, you are definitely going to be feeling super chilled. And rather than feeling that euphoric kind of joyful rush as your body starts to lift up to the vibrations of the sounds entering it, you're more likely to feel the opposite, the kind of 
gentle, soft lull. And I kind of liken this in a way, um, and don't be freaked out by this, but I kind of liken it to when you get an anaesthetic. Um, I remember, you know, when I got my tonsils out and you count back from 10 and you get to seven and then it's all over. It's kind of, kind of like that feeling. And when you go to the dentist and they give you an injection and you kind of have the, the weird moment of it going in and then it just starts to gently ease up and you're like, oh my God, peace at last, no more toothache. And that's how the sound feels to me. If you're coming to tired, it's like that kind of gentle, not anaesthetise is probably the wrong word, but just gentle release of the stuff that's keeping you tense and tired, just melting away. So it can feel really, really up or really kind of gentle and softening, like someone stroking your head as you're going off to sleep, really relaxing. If you're coming into a session feeling like super heightened, either pretty kind of anxious or or kind of fired up, maybe you're really stressed, you've had a difficult day at work and you're just really firing on all cylinders, adrenaline pumping, cortisol going, um, or if you're working with things designed to have this uplifting experience, if you're working with plant medicines, if you're you're unlikely to be coming to a sound session in ayahuasca, but if you've been doing peyote, if you're on cacao, um, if you're working with other kind of mood enhancers, um, particular teas, for example, like mugwort can really heighten your senses. Um, or if you're working with crystals, where you've got crystals in your space, on your body, which are really going to amplify your energy, um, then you'll probably find this has the potential to be quite hallucinogenic. Um, and this is the bit people get scared of. And I remember my mum, um, the first time she had a sound bath, was a bit weirded out by the idea that you know you're out of control of your body and i think that's a thing a lot of people get scared by if you're not used to the idea that there is something beyond the physical that you your conscious mind isn't controlling the first time you discover that it can be a total trip out um, and not necessarily a good one it can be disarming and that's why i like to share this stuff in advance so that you guys can feel much more confident with your expectations in the right place as you come into a session um, and I guess really the thing that's really important to understand on that third perspective is that, you know, the body we have here, this body we can touch, our knees, our hair, our shoulders, our face, you know, it's blown, bone, blood, tissue, fascia, but it's all just sound, it's frequency, frequency at very high density, so it's creating mass. We have a whole other body that we can't see that doesn't have this frequency, that doesn't have this density. And that's our energy body where so much of our being is stored. You know, we have a subconscious that's way beyond the mind that is listening to my voice now, that's way beyond my, my speaking voice, my mind that's telling me what words I'm going to say next and how I'm going to get from one sentence to the next. And depending on where you are in your practice, if you've been practicing yoga and meditation and transcendental stuff for many years, you're going to be really comfortable with the idea of these layers of realms of the body, the koshas, if you're a yogi. If you haven't been, it's going to feel really alien and a bit literally out of body. It might feel kind of trippy. If you've ever had that kind of Sunday afternoon experience at Glastonbury, it might be in that kind of world. And, um, and that's just a good thing to know in advance. Some people find that in the sound, they have incredible colours. They see kaleidoscopic images. I've um, heard everything from, from purple yetis to you know, zebra-coloured unicorns that people see in there in their visions and this is really you beginning to access your subconscious mind so depending on how much awareness understanding and experience you have of journeying in those realms um, it may or may not be quite a trippy full-on experience and that is nothing to be scared of it's really one of the reasons we do this work is to learn more about our existence our experience and to feel more comfortable with understanding our physical body's place amongst our energy body and amongst the the rest of the world so it's uh, really a fantastic opportunity to get a little bit deeper with some of that work. Um, I never want anyone to be freaked out by this, so if what I've just said does super freak you out, then feel free to drop me a message or ask some comments and let me know um, how you feel about that, if there's ways I could present this or that you would like to understand um, how you potentially might feel in a sound bath. So quick summary, if you are coming into this with pain, aches, injuries, um, it's unlikely that they will be magnified, although it is possible. And what you'll more likely feel is awareness of what's going on in that area that's injured or in discomfort as the sound begins to bring the cells back into balance and heal them and put the body into a state of self-healing. If you're coming into sound exhausted, shattered, worn out, you'll most likely have a very deep, almost comatose rest, completely shutting down the brain function and the body's basic functioning systems, allowing you to completely rest. 
if you're coming to, into this either quite heightened, either through anxiety or stress or through working with crystals or shamanic practice, you may well have quite a hallucinogenic experience. They can feel really floaty, you probably won't be aware of your body and it will be actually really quite beautiful and amazing, although you may come back to your body feeling like, whoa, where have I just been? Um, it's kind of, I always equate, it's kind of like those long flights, you know, when you get like a 12 hour flight and you're flying through time zones and you just don't really know what time it is and it's dark and then light and then dark again and then light again and you're the only one awake on the plane and it just feels really goofy. I have a lot of those, but that's kind of how I think this can feel. Um, last couple of points to make. Um, the best way to explain all this, of course, is really just to try it. So that's why I do a lot of these little Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives, just to give you even a few minutes of experience with different sounds to connect with, to see how you feel. And for most of us, you know, we, we know and our subconscious minds and our intrinsic bodies know if they like a sound or if it doesn't resonate for them. Um, all of these gongs, everything I use and that most sound practitioners and therapists use is tuned. And nearly all of us will find that certain notes just feel like home, they just resonate, our body gets into the vibration of them and it just feels awesome. And then there's some notes that you're like, hell no, that feels terrible, I don't want that, it really doesn't feel good for my body. And, um, and part of the practice that I do on a one-to-one -one basis is beginning to map those notes for you, map those parts of the body, work out where the resonance is and work out what feels good, what doesn't feel good, what's going to support you getting into a healing state and a relaxed meditative state. So I know that for me, D's, B sharps, E's are notes that for some reason that's where my body vibrates at. When I hear that note, it's like I'm just at one with the sound, because I am, because we're vibrating at the same frequency. When I hear an A, I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> I'm not an A. An A does not work well for me. It makes me feel a bit jittery, jarred. I don't hate the sound, but it just doesn't feel comfortable. And you'll really know what I feel. And if, if you've ever done any of my sound baths and gong baths or with somebody else, you'll probably really know how you can be really deep in a trance-like beautiful meditation and suddenly a note will pull you back and you'll be like, oh, stop that, please. Um, and, you know, everything passes, everything's impermanent. So it's good to have that in mind when that does arise for you. Um, but really one of the things we're trying to experience in a sound bath is that full range of emotions and that full range of connections with our body and our energy body. So... It's totally fine if not everything resonates. It's good to explore and see what happens. So with that in mind, these bowls, my bowls are um, Himalayan bowls. These are often called Tibetan and they can be either. Depends where they're sourced from. And I particularly love this bowl. I don't even know where I got him. I think I actually might have got him in the Himalayas, but I have a lot of bowls and they have found me in different ways. And this is one for me that the resonance of these Himalayan bowls, it's just really deep, it really gets into the bones. I'm quite near the mic here, so hopefully you can pick some of this up. Quite a low hum. So if you close your eyes and let that sound just resonate through your body. ripple and that's where the metal is wobbling and you're getting a couple of different notes in there. So this bowl's an F and it's to me a really beautiful kind of soulful root note. I really love it. But see what you think. also be the instrument. Some people really love these bowls. I really love them. I love them for years. I got into them way before gongs and way before other instruments, way before I was a sound practitioner. They just always really speak to me. I like to play them for myself you know, a couple of times a day, every day, just as standard. They're really accessible. If you practice yoga, you'll notice a lot of yoga teachers have these now because they are, you know, they need virtually no skill to play. Once you've figured it out, that's it. So... <laughs> Um, so lots of yoga teachers like to use these at the end of class, but maybe don't necessarily know or recognise how the notes may affect you. So the certain notes you would definitely avoid at the end of class. I really love this. It's still going on. I'm not sure if the mic's picking it up anymore, because even though it's a great mic, it's a quiet sound. 
So let's try crystal ball. These sound really different. This one's a C. of either resonates more and this is really the beginning of the key of how you feel during sound different notes resonating with different organs different body parts there's a whole bunch of science that every organ in our body has a different note and a different frequency and i believe that but i also believe that every individual person has a different frequency for every part of their body this is one of the reasons i like to use tuning for instruments and notes that we can play and that we can play around with and you can experience and understand how they make you feel. Um, I would just highlight one last time this video is about how you feel during a sound bath. Um, how you feel depends on what you're bringing. So it's one of the reasons I invite everyone to set intentions, to spend time scanning their body, their mind, their energy body before we begin because what you're bringing into the space and into your practice into your room is going to really inform how you feel, whether you feel completely knocked out and comatose, whether you feel heightened and trippy, or whether you feel like you're really processing and releasing and, and healing within your body. Um, it's a very unique journey. No two journeys the same. No one can ever be in anybody else's head to be able to explain that. Um, but it's something I would love everyone in the world to be trying. It really is a magical experience. Um, so I have tons of videos on here on YouTube. If you are interested to explore sound, please check them out. Um, I am doing a gong bath tonight, which will be 7 till 7.45. Um, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. You can also access it through my website if you're a member or would like to be. Um, I will post the details on my Facebook page. And I hope that if this speaks to you in some way, you'll come along um, and explore a session for free. If you'd like to, you can make a donation if you wish. Um, and just see how, see what sticks, see how it makes you feel. In these times, um, I think exploring, having an open mind and, and understanding your body in a new and different way is something that we can all benefit from. So thank you very much for hanging out. Thank you for your attention. Um, what's more, my name's Jane. Thank you for being here. Please follow the page, subscribe on YouTube. Um, learn about sound, learn about what it can do for you. It really is um, one of the most untapped um, resources we have in society. Have a beautiful rest of Wednesday and hopefully I'll see some of you at 7pm this evening. <laughs>